What's going on everybody? Dots Gaming here and today I have the updated Stamina Dragon Knight PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Ascending Tide patch but I do feel a bit generous call this, calling this a Stamina Dragon Knight build because it is definitely leaning more towards that hybrid playstyle that Ascending Tide has been promoting. Um, I think with the new changes to the skills that have come in this patch with all skills now having hybrid scaling and scaling off the highest of your damage and or resource pools it has opened a lot of possibilities for stamina dragon knight which in my opinion is a class that i've been you know it's been having a little bit of trouble and although my builds from last patch i actually do feel like worked out very very well it was a really good pressure dot build healing is just way 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 too high right now and that build i feel struggles to get through the healing that a lot of these builds can pump out and so i've kind of oriented it a little bit more towards being a bursty build and the latest iteration of this build has been extremely fun i find it to be extremely uh different especially considering what stam dk has looked like in the past and we have embraced a much more of a hybrid play style going into this patch and so i'm excited to show you guys what i came up with and what has been working for me on my stam dk now guys like I always say, especially now more than ever, this is just what I like, what I use, and what works for me. If you guys don't like this setup, don't like something about it, want to change something, be my guest. Do whatever alterations you want to make. This is just what I personally have been finding success with and what I have been enjoying on my Stam DK in the Ascending Tide patch. So kicking things off, guys, really quick with gear. If I can figure out how to open my character tab. That would be this one. Okay, we did it. We're here. For professional video, by the way. <laughs> Our first set is going to be two pieces of Blood Spawn. So Blood Spawn still, in my opinion, has a fantastic place on the stamina DK, giving us a line of stamina recovery. And when you take damage, you have a 6% chance to generate 13 ultimate and increase your physical and spell resist by 37, 31 for 5 seconds. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds. So Every piece of blood spawn is extremely useful for this build. This gives us a line of stamina recovery, which of course we are still a stamina focused class, so very useful to us. The extra resistance helps us be tanky, gives a little bit more than minor resolve. But most importantly for this build in particular, it gives us that 13 ultimate every five seconds. And the reason that's important is because this is a corrosive armor build. My main ultimate primary ult for this build is going to be corrosive and that is what we are focusing our offensive pressure on as i'm sure you can know by my fantastically low spell a spell and physical penetration so this build focuses very very heavily on uptime of corrosive and so because of that blood spawn helps us get to that number extremely fast now, our front bar set is still going to be the same as last patch, and that is going to be Essence Thief. So Essence Thief gives us two lines of stamina, a line of weapon and spell damage, and when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack, you draw Essence from your opponent that goes near them for five seconds, giving you a boost to your, uh, give essentially a heal. It restores stam and increases your damage by 10% for 10 seconds. Essence Thief is an extremely strong set you get a very solid heal from it you get a giant amount of sustain from this set 4200 stam from that pool is huge and then 10 percent damage done that's major berserk that is huge so this five piece gives you a, gives you a heal gives you a sustain gives you a shitload of damage there's nothing not to like about the essence thief and some people don't like as much having to constantly pick up the damage pool or pick up the little pools that come from your opponents i get that but with the way that we have our gear set up in this build getting to those pools and actually picking them up really isn't that much of an issue and i will show you why when we get to some of the traits and other sets that we have available now guys our next set has been a personal favorite of mine on my dragon knights and that is going to be five pieces of daedric trickery i know some people are tired of seeing daedric trickery but it's really good on dragon knight so that is why i use it it's got a line of health a line of stamina a line of magicka and when you deal damage you gain one of five random major buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds expedition protection mending heroism and vitality all of which are wildly useful to the stam dk vitality and mending give us much needed boost to our healing heroism not only gives us sustain but it helps us get to that uh corrosive armor significantly faster as i accidentally open up your skill point finder um 
We also have uh, Protection, which of course is going to be very useful for just mitigating damage. And then Expedition is also extremely useful because it helps us pick up those Essence Thief pools a lot easier, as well as stick to our opponents. And so literally every part of this set is just extremely useful to the Stamina Dragonite, which is why we back bar this. It's just very versatile, gives us a lot. It's, it's it's just a fantastic set, and I highly recommend it. Now, as usual with my front bar, back bar sets, we have two open slots. So, of course, one of them will be filled by trainee, giving us a much-needed boost to our maximum health. Again, if you are not running, like, 30k health this patch, you're probably not running enough health. And so, trainee helps us get to that number by giving us that really big boost to help for that one piece and you know it just fills that one open slot well because we do have a mythic on the build and that is going to be my personal favorite the mark and ring of majesty this is going to give us 200 weapon damage and 2300 armor gives us just a really nice boost to our offense and a very big boost to our defense and the thing I like about this set is just that armor I find to be so valuable. You know, being able to gain that weapon damage is, of course, really, really nice. But, like, just getting 2,300 armor off of a ring is really, really, really good. And the tankiness, in my opinion, from this is quite noticeable. So, I really love Markin. It's my, my favorite mythic in the game. I use it on a ludicrous amount of builds this patch. And so, highly recommend it for this MDK. Now, guys, in terms of traits and weights and everything, we are going to be running one reinforced and everything else is going to be in pen. All pieces will be triglyphed and we are running one heavy and six pieces of medium. The heavy will be that reinforced chest. We are running uh, one piece of swift. This is going to be very important for giving us a little bit more movement speed, which makes it that much easier to pick up the essence thief balls. Um, so... In my opinion, this is quite important. And then we also have two robust. You do not have to run robust if you don't want to. If you want to run infused, you can on this weapon damage piece uh, and this one here and then run swift here on the reduced mag cost. You can go right ahead. Um, but I actually find the robust to be a little bit nicer. I just like to play with a little bit larger uh, max stat pools on SMB front bar builds just because I do block quite a bit. So having more stamina access, I, I personally find very valuable. But if you don't like the two robust, robust one swift setup you can just do two infused and one swift but make sure that the infused are on the weapon damage glyphs and that the swift would be on this one which is we actually run two weapon damage and one reduce mag cost i use a lot of mag skills in this build and we are a stage three vampire so because of that i do find reducing the magic cost of my skills to be quite necessary so we do run a enchant of that on our ring on the front bar, we do run a Nern Honed one-hander, as well as a Sturdy Shield with a Stamina Enchant, and we are going to be using Double Dot Poisons for a nice bit of consistent damage. And then on that back bar, we run a Nern Honed Great Sword with a Weapon and Spell Damage Glyph. We run Nern Honed Great Sword for just the big weapon damage spike, which is really going to help our heals on that back bar. And that's going to be that Daedric Trickery Great Sword, while our front bar is going to be that Essence Thief. Now, guys, going into our skills, our, our, this is going to look real similar if you watch my Mag DK video our first skill is going to be a molten whip so you lash an enemy with flame dealing 9400 damage if you strike an enemy that's immobilized or stunned you set them off balance and then when you activate a different art and flame ability you gain a stack of seething fury increasing the damage of your next molten whip by 33 percent and your weapon and spell damage by 75 for 10 seconds this is a molten whip build and i cannot believe i'm saying that for my stam dk um i like this infinitely better than the stamina stamp bamboos this patch it just feels really really good i'm gonna be honest it's weird to like talking like this about a stam dk because it's like this literally looks like my mag dk's bars from last patch but with a different breath and claw morphs um but i just find it to be really strong man you pop corrosive you stack this up and you deal that big molten whip damage you you hit hard like it hits really 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 hard so i highly recommend molten whip for the spam ball in this build i do find it way more enjoyable than flame lash um i tested this build with flame lash and while the healing was better the pressure was considerably lower so molten whip Again, and plus I am a believer that right now we want to go for bigger burst this patch. And so because of that, Molten Whip just kind of fits the build that much better. Um, and plus those extra weapon and spell damage that comes from Seething Fury also does help with heals and other tool tips. So I do find Molten Whip to be the best spammable option this patch. Um, now going into our Claw Morph, we are using still Venomous Claw here on the Stamina DK, giving us initial poison damage and poison damage over time. 
Now, this also will deal 20% more damage every two seconds, and then enemies hit by the initial hit are afflicted with the poisonous status effect, so it essentially lowers the skill cost down to about 1,300. Now, why am I using Venomous Claw over Burning Embers? So, personally, for Stam DK in particular, when I tried Engulfing Flames on this, number one, the Magicka was a bit tough to sustain, but number two my pressure was considerably lower like venomous claw deals a lot of freaking damage it deals it 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 really 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 ramps up nice and high and so i think venomous claw is still very valuable for the stam dk um yeah sure the hop from burning embers was nice but like i feel like the healing on the build is fine and so i'd rather have the much bigger dot that comes from venomous claw than the heal from burning embers now i feel like it's it's the mag dk it's a bit of a different story it's again different build uh, engulfing flames is a factor like it's just, it, things are just different on that build right but for this one venomous claw feels very valuable still feels very good to run the stam dk and I do highly recommend it. Now, our main stun is going to be Shattering Rocks. Shattering Rocks is now really freaking good for Stam DK because it scales with our weapon damage. And so because of that, we get a stupidly high heal on this. So this is a stun. They cannot be blocked. It cannot be dodged. It is the best stun in the game, in my opinion. And it's just fantastic. This also is going to be our source of minor brutality for the build, which is why it's very important to have. Um, and so, yeah. There's nothing not to like about this skill. It's super good. And like I said in my MagDK video, if you guys watched it, um, I always pair Shattering Rocks with Molten Whip. You know, you want Flame Lash with uh, Fossilize because you need that root to be able to proc Power Lash because you got to whip twice. But with Molten Whip, I don't need that. And so I don't have the heal because I'm using Molten Whip, not Flame Lash. So I'd rather have the heal off of Shattering Rocks. So makes it a little bit better in my opinion. Now we are running Noxious Breath. So Noxious Breath is going to be our Conal skill. Um, so this is going to give us poison damage and then give us poison damage over 14 seconds. Now, enemies are afflicted with major breach, reducing their physical and spell resist by 5948. Now, the reason we use Noxious Breath here is for the pen buff. Um, didn't really have any room personally for um pierce armor, but also Noxious is a really good ability to like spam if you're like don't have a lot of magicka and you're like awkwardly in between uh things or you need some good aoe like and plus the good thing about major breach is that major breach affects everything even our, our magicka skills are you know the stamina morphs here like if this if this was engulfing flames like yeah it would buff flames of oblivion and lash but it wouldn't buff claw but major breach from noxious breath buffs everything and so this gives us a really solid amount of pen outside of our um corrosive um and then it's still a very good dot anyway. So I just find this to be a bit better for this build um, than something like engulfing. Again, engulfing is going to be on the mag DK. But I feel that for the stam DK, Noxious is still extremely good. Um, again, keeps our pen at a decent amount when we're outside of our corrosive window and then inside a corrosive window. Again, we're mostly focused on flame lash damage anyway. Um, but again, Noxious Breath is going to be the conal breath morph on the stamina DK. Now we still, we do actually run Flames of Oblivion on this guy. Flames of Oblivion pumps it deals so much damage i don't need to run cauterize on this damn dk because i have other heals on my back bar um and so flames of oblivion is just up here doing work chunking dealing damage and let me tell you man during your corrosive window if this is hit shooting those three fireballs out every five seconds giving you that crit buff and you hit a big molten whip and a flames of oblivion ball hits it is serious damage it is serious serious damage so Flames of Oblivion, very good here. Also really good to stack Molten Whip if you have magic to spare. Spamming this is super strong. So definitely recommend this as your fifth skill as well as your crit buff here on the Stamina DK. Now, like I said, guys, this is a Corrosive Armor build. And so because of that, we obviously are going to be running Corrosive Armor as our ultimate. This is going to limit incoming damage to 3% of your max health and dealing a, about 1,200 poison damage to nearby enemies every second for 12 seconds. Now, while active, this ability in all direct damage dealt ignores resistance, so you essentially deal true damage. And so the instant hit on uh, Claw and Noxious Breath will deal true. Flames of Oblivion and Whip will hit really, really hard. But your main goal when you're hitting Corrosive is big whip combined with flames of oblivion that smack of damage is going to chunk so make sure you got your essence thief running make sure you got your dots and everything roll and set somebody up with the fossilize and then hit that corrosive and just smack the whip and if you can also time it on a five uh ten five or zero second flames of oblivion flames of oblivion will hit the same time it is a lot 
of damage. So Corrosive going to be the ultimate of choice on the build, which again is why we don't prioritize Pen all that much outside of our Noxious Breath. Now, the back bar, guys, is going to be our 2H. We are going to run Executioner here. I still do find the execute very useful for the stam dk so this does uh let us spin around strike an enemy down dealing uh 4600 physical damage and it deals up to 400 percent more based on uh damage to enemies with less than 50 percent health so there's just let's just execute people and kill people that are getting low now our main hot on the build guys is going to be resolving bigger this is just going to give us a heal over time over four seconds uh cost stam there's really nothing, in the, there's nothing to say about this. This is, this is going to be our primary hot. Uh, we also do have Rally. So Rally is going to give us our form of Major Brutality and Sorcery, increasing our damage by 20%, giving us Minor Endurance, which is very important, increasing our Stamina Recovery by 15%. And then this is also going to give us a Burst Heal when Rally ends with the heal being bigger, the longer that Rally has been active. So we got Rally as a Burst Heal. We have Resolving Vigor as our heal over time. And then we also have heals coming from Shattering Rocks. And between those three heals, as well as the healing pat, uh, the extra healing buffs coming from danger trickery it personally feels like enough healing for me and so rally again going to be the burst heal of choice here on the stam dk we also do run volatile armor which is going to deal magic damage over time reflect damage to enemies that deal damage to us direct damage to us and then it's most importantly just giving us our major resolve buff giving us six thousand armor for 20 seconds this also does give us burning heart from the um draconic power skill line which is very important to get our big healing boost that 12 percent healing increase while having a draconic power skill active now this one may surprise you guys i am running elusive mist i am a huge fan of mist form so we run elusive mist even on the same dk reducing our damaging by 75 percent and giving us major expedition while we have this active and maintain the channel and entering this form will remove and grant immunity to all disabling effects but you cannot be healed and recovery stats are disabled in my opinion this patch this is a big in my opinion elusive mist feels better than shuffle on my stam dk you are so tanky with elusive mist now, i could also just be insanely biased because i love elusive mist and i've been using it for a long time so i know a lot of tips and tricks with it but to me you have the mag sustain in this build with blood spawn with um your pots with heroism you are constantly ulting like your corrosive uptime is solid but with all of those things you're getting magic back and even with the tri stat pots that this build runs um you gain you gain magic back and so because of that like the you know the magic of sustain is pretty good like obviously can you sustain this as long as you can on a mag dk no but you can still sustain it sustain it for a very long time and so to me this is just i feel i feel like i have such an easier time kiting with mist form than i do like pressing shuffle and just like trying to fucking run you know so elusive mist it's a it's an amazing kiting tool when you know how to use it um and i really recommend running it on your stam dk also it pairs really well because we are stage three vampire so we you know we want that for the undeath 30 percent damage reduction based on our missing health from the undeath passive but then we also have strike from the shadow so when we leave that mist form we are gaining 300 weapon damage that buffs our vigor that buffs our rally that gives us those big heals when we come out of mist form we could also come out of mist form swap bars park corrosive hit someone in the face with a whip you know that's something that you can do with with mist form and, and the, the extra passives that come from it so it's extremely good i highly recommend it as your kiting seal for your stam dk now guys on the back bar leap morph of choice is going to be ferocious leap so ferocious leap is going to be used in those times where someone's about to die in your execution it's just not doing the job you can just hit them with a leap and just really quickly hit them with an extra burst of damage this also is just it gives us some some versatility it gives us that gap close that leap brings it knocks enemies back it stuns them for two seconds it gives us a giant shield and that's why i use this over take flight because yeah take flight deals damage but like that's pretty much all it does is it deals damage you can jump a little bit further and it's a little bit cheaper but I personally, it deals a little bit more damage tooltip wise, but I personally find the bonuses from Ferocious Leap, that giant shield, to be way better, in my opinion, than what comes from Take Flight. And so Ferocious Leap, it's there for the versatility when we need it um for again for that gap closer for that extra burst for the shield um or for, sometimes you just need a cheap bolt you know and on, on the dk for sustain and so ferociously being there does also provide that so i recommend running that excuse me on your back bar because what's also good is that you could leap into those executioners which is also really really potent 
Now, guys, in terms of our stats here, we're going to be running 16.6k maximum magical with 30.4k maximum health and 29k max stamina on the front bar with 28.1k on that back bar. Our back bar uh, magic is also 17.7k. We have 871 magic recovery with 1240 stamina recovery. We run about 4k weapon damage on buffed. We have 23% crit with 700 pen. Again, this is a corrosive build, so that doesn't matter all too much. We have 17.9k unbuffed resists on the front bar with 16.3 on the back bar with that 2070 critical resistance. We do use the Warrior Mundus for increased weapon damage. Again, this is a corrosive build, so I'm focusing as much on that extra weapon damage damage as possible to make me deal the most damage inside my corrosive window we also like i said do run the vampire stage three and we run the jewels of misrule buff food in order to give us that increased stamina and magical recovery since we do use quite a hybrid of different skills some from stamina some from magicka so the jewels of misrule really does help while also giving us some extra health in the process which again is very valuable now for this build i cannot possibly recommend imperial enough this is again a stage three vampire so the imperial sustain uh, the cost reduction is very very helpful it also does apply to magical skills stamina skills core combat skills ultimates it applies to everything and so for a build like this imperial is perfect like a stam focused like hybrid kind of deal like imperial really 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 is perfect for the build also the boost to health and stamina are of course extremely welcome in like a patch like this so i think imperial is by far the best race for the build and the one i recommend and i don't know if i said this already guys but like i said we are 13 points into magicka and 51 into stam i put some points into magicka personally pad my max stat pool a little bit just to give me more time in between those ultimate windows to be able to cast those magic abilities before my ultimates ultimate my ultimates ultimately restore them back or my potion does speaking of consumables we are using tri stat potions on the build simply restoring our health magic and stamina and giving us the major according major recovery buffs now, guys, going into our champion points, we are still going to be running Duelist Rebuff for that single target and dot damage reduction. We are going to be having Ironclad for direct damage reduction. Uh, we also do have Deadly Aim for single target and dot increase, 10%, and then Master at Arms for direct damage increase. Uh, going into our red CP, we have Balanced Vitality for 1,400 maximum health. Again, health meta, very important. We have Survival Instincts. Now, this is going to give us 25% cost reduction on core combat, which is extremely important in a build like this because our sword and board is our front bar so we are going to be blocking quite a bit and so because of that getting 25 percent blast cost reduction is very valuable um in terms of this part this part of the tree i guess i don't know where i was going with that we have sustained by suffering for increased uh, recoveries across the board while we have a negative effect on us and then we have pain's refuge for two percent damage reduction for every two negative effects on you up to a maximum of 20 percent now, guys, focusing on the rotation for this build, if you played my Mag DK last patch, uh, this is going to feel very, very similar. So you are going to want to maintain on yourself uh, Volatile Armor, Rally, and Flames of Oblivion. On your opponents, you're going to want to maintain Venomous Claw and Noxious Breath. Make sure to Light Attack Weave as well to apply that double dot poison. You are going to use Venomous Claw, Noxious Breath, and Flames of Oblivion to stack up your Molten Whip. You are going to go into a Shattering Rocks and then hit them with said Molten Whip. And then as they get lower, you swap to your back bar and you use Executioner. Now your goal when you build Ultimate is again, make sure you have Essence Thief procced you should have essence thief procced before going into corrosive you don't want to go into corrosive have the essence thief proc and then need to go run to grab the essence thief you might be losing precious seconds of damage on your opponent so make sure the essence thief is freshly procced then hit corrosive have all your dots and everything rolling and then corrosive stun big whip that's what you're going to want to do in order to get that big whip landing on your opponent for massive, massive, massive damage. And then again, as they get low, hit that Executioner spam. Defensively, um, Shattering Rocks actually supply a good bit of consistent healing on that front bar when you just stun people. But defensively, basically your goal, if you need to kite, kite away with Mist Form and then heal yourself up with Vigor and Rally. You have both Mending and Vitality in this build, so these heals will be quite respectable. Um... So yeah, be sure to, to use these when you are getting low. Now, in terms of Essence Thief, guys, I've seen a lot of people have trouble using Essence Thief. You want to prioritize the Essence Thief orb a lot. It's very important to pick up not only for sustain, but your damage will be a lot lower if you do not get it. The only time you should not prioritize picking up the Essence Thief orb is in A, it, it spawns in a very, very, very bad location. Let's say it's compromising or it goes into a tree, then you, obviously you don't want to go grab it at that point 
or if you 100% know you're going to kill somebody. If someone's at like 2% health and the essence thief procs and you know you can kill them, yeah, just kill them. But if there's a chance that they're going to live, you're better off grabbing the orb and picking it up so that you are buffed for the rest of the fight, okay? So just unless it is, again, compromising location or they're like 100% going to die, always prioritize picking up the essence thief orb. And again, with major expedition and one piece of swift in the build, you will be moving fast enough to be able to pick it up with ease, especially because we are also wearing six pieces of medium, so we do move quite quickly. Now, guys, with that being said, I think that's going to be it for my new Stam DK build for the Ascending Tide patch. Definitely an interesting build. Not, not the way I expected to go with my Stam DK this patch, but I have been having quite a lot of fun with it. The build is very interesting. It feels like a true like hybrid Stam Mag DK, and I don't know. I like it. It's cool. It's fun. And it works really, really well. So I hope you guys have just as much fun with it as me. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you smacked a like on the video. It helps me a ton in the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to leave them below. And guys, for more ESO Ascending Tide PvP builds, be sure to hit that sub button as well as hit that bell to keep those notifications on. Thank you all so much for stopping by today. I do very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next one. Free, because my keybinds are fucked. You're throwing? I gotta die, dude. I can't use three abilities or two abilities and I can't break free. <laughs> oh my god, you're th you're inting. I can't use my spammable. They wanna give away. Like, that's something people don't get. Is like if that person who won the giveaway wanted to, they could have sued the company because that's very, very, very against the FTC laws for the United States. And they are a UA space company. They made fun of her for having a stream. It's like a low view count, yeah. Really? Even even though she was accepted into their program. It's like, if you want to have an exclusive program, have an exclusive program, but don't accept people into your thing. Try to have them do all of this fucking advertising for you and then be a giant piece of human garbage. And that, that, now their, their company went under. Because the guy that made fun of the person was the person that owned the company. What an asshole. Yeah, well, that's what you get. Now he doesn't have a business anymore. Get fucking wrecked. Um. You know what's fucking sick? What? I still have performance issues, but I can see it and You fucking... can see it happen faster. Dude, it's. Oh my god. You lag faster. No, no, no. It's like I can see myself in clear fucking like HD that I can't. Caught, cast caught in 4K. Yeah, in 4K. <laughs> what? Ain't smooth as shit though. Come back. <laughs> Actually, no. It's just a healer thing. And a fucking um. What is that shit called? Cheese string. What? The cheese string. The oh, you... the fucking uh, guard. Oh, guard, guard. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what are you saying to me right now? The cheese string. I don't know a fucking name anymore. I'm washed up. This man's throwing. That guy was just tanky, huh? It's not my damage. The meta. Uh, my meta. My meta. I'm trying to cope here. Just hopping on I'm... some copium, dude. Yeah. I crushed up a fucking line of coke. Snorted that shit right through the nostril. <laughs> there it is. Oh shit. Nah, my damage is fine. Up into like these game modes so they could just like sit on flags and shit, you know? Yeah. Oh, ow. Wait, Dark Converge is 10k. Oh, they uh, fixed it. Oh shit. Yeah. You can bomb. Oh, dude, my necro's probably gonna feel great. Yeah, time to uh, transmute that shit to uh, three infused again, bro. Three infused bombing? Yeah. Unironically? Fuck that dark converges damage. Oh, they didn't fix the Nightblade desync. <laughs> oh, it makes me sad to even think about. Dude, that's the reason why Devin will never play this game ever again. Can't fucking jump while putting a shade down. 
Yeah, it sucks. I want, I'm like wondering who it was that was on the forums complaining that his shades stuck in the air. Yeah, right. Who was that guy? Yeah, no, I'm still going through the process of updating the build so it's not done.